Hello friend, welcome to my channel. In this video, I prepared the most detailed documentary of the Crusades for you. It will be a very long video, have a good time in advance. Please don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications and comment to support my channel. The Crusades were a series of religious wars initiated, supported, and sometimes directed by the Latin Church in the medieval period. The best known of these crusades are those to the Holy Land in the period between 1095 and 1291 that were intended to recover Jerusalem and its surrounding area from Islamic rule. Beginning with the First Crusade, which resulted in the recovery of Jerusalem in 1099, dozens of crusades were fought providing a focal point of European history for centuries. In 1095, Pope Urban II proclaimed the First Crusade at the Council of Clermont. He encouraged military support for Byzantine Emperor Alexios I against the Seljuk Turks and called for an armed pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Across all social strata in Western Europe, there was an enthusiastic response. The First Crusaders had a variety of motivations, including religious salvation, satisfying feudal obligations, opportunities for renown, an economic or political advantage. Later Crusades were conducted by generally more organized armies, sometimes led by a king. All were granted papal indulgences. Initial successes established four Crusader states, the County of Edessa, the Principality of Antioch, the Kingdom of Jerusalem, and the County of Tripoli. The Crusader presence remained in the region in some form until the fall of Acre in 1291. After this, there were no further Crusades to recover the Holy Land. Concurrent military activities in the Iberian Peninsula against the Moors and in northeastern Europe against pagan West Slav, Baltic, and Finnic peoples have also been called Crusades sometimes retroactively, long after the event had ended, due to the facts that they also had central approval by the Roman Catholic Church and that the military campaigns were organized in comparable fashion, with often similar rhetoric, symbolism, and banners as applied during the campaigns in the Middle East. Other church-sanctioned campaigns called Crusades were fought against heretical Christian sects, against the Ottoman Empire, and for political reasons. Unsanctioned by the church, there were also several popular Crusades of ordinary citizens. Proclaimed a Crusade in 1123. The struggle between the Christians and Muslims in the Iberian Peninsula eventually became better known as the Reconquista in European historiography, and only ended in 1492 with the fall of the Muslim Emirate of Granada. From 1147, campaigns in Northern Europe against pagan tribes were considered crusades. In 1199, Pope Innocent III began the practice of proclaiming crusades against Christian heretics. In the 13th century, crusading was used against the Cathars in Languedoc and against Bosnia, this practice continued against the Waldensians in Savoy and the Hussites in Bohemia in the 15th century and against Protestants in the 16th. From the mid-14th century, crusading rhetoric was used in response to the rise of the Ottoman Empire, and ended around 1699 with the War of the Holy League. The term crusade first referred to military expeditions undertaken by European Christians in the 11th, 
12th and 13th centuries to the Holy Land. The conflicts to which the term is applied have been extended to include other campaigns initiated, supported, and sometimes directed by the Roman Catholic Church against pagans and heretics, or for alleged religious ends. Crusades differed from other Christian religious wars in that they were considered a penitential exercise, and so earned participants forgiveness for all confessed sins. The term's usage can be misleading, particularly regarding the early Crusades, and the definition remains a matter of debate among contemporary historians. At the time of the First Crusade, Ita, journey, and peregrinatio, pilgrimage, were used to describe the campaign. Crusader terminology remained largely indistinguishable from that of Christian pilgrimage during the 12th century. Only at the end of the century was a specific language of crusading adopted in the form of crucignators, one signed by the cross for a crusader. This led to the French Croisade, the Way of the Cross. By the mid-13th century the cross became the major descriptor of the Crusades with Crux Transmarina, the cross overseas, used for Crusades in the Eastern Mediterranean, and Crux Cismarina, the cross this side of the sea, for those in Europe. The modern English crusade dates to the 17th century, with the work of Louis Marmbach. Strategic raiding was known as Passagium Particular and more fundamental campaigns as Passagium Generale. The terms Franks and Latins were used by the peoples of the Near East during the Crusades for Western Europeans, distinguishing them from the Byzantine Christians who were known as Greeks. Saracen was used for an Arab Muslim, derived from a Greek and Roman name for the nomadic peoples of the Syro-Arabian desert. Crusader sources used the term Syrians to describe local Christians who were members of the Greek Orthodox Church, and Jacobites for those who were members of the Syrian Orthodox Church. The Crusader states of Syria and Palestine were known as the Outrema from the French Outremer, or the land beyond the sea. Crusades and the Holy Land, 1095 to 1291. The Crusades to the Holy Land are the best known of the religious wars associated with the term, beginning in 1095 and lasting some two centuries. These crusades began with a fervent desire to wrest the Holy Land from the Muslims, and ran through eight major numbered crusades and dozens of minor crusades over the period. The Arab-Byzantine Wars, begun in the 7th century, were essentially over by 995 and Byzantine Emperor Basil II was able to extend the empire's territorial recovery to its furthest extent in 1025, with frontiers stretching east to Iran. It controlled Bulgaria and much of southern Italy, and suppressed piracy in the Mediterranean Sea. The empire's relationships with its Islamic neighbors were no more quarrelsome than its relationships with the Slavs and the Western Christians. The Normans in Italy, to the north Beccanix, Serbs and Cumans, and Seljuk Turks in the east all competed with the empire. The political situation in the Middle East was changed by waves of Turkish migration, in particular, the arrival of the Seljuk Turks in the 10th century. Previously a minor ruling clan from Transoxania, they were recent converts to Islam who migrated into Iran to seek their fortune. In two decades, 
they conquered Iran, Iraq, and the Near East. Byzantium's attempted confrontation in 1071 to suppress the Seljuks' sporadic raiding led to the defeat at the Battle of Manzikert. In the same year, Jerusalem was taken from the Fatimids by the Turkish warlord Athsas, who seized most of Syria and Palestine as part of the expansion of the Seljuks throughout the Middle East. The Seljuk hold on the city resulted in pilgrims reporting difficulties and the oppression of Christians. The result was the First Crusade. First Crusade in 1074. Just three years after Manzikert and the Seljuk takeover of Jerusalem, Gregory VII began planning to launch a military campaign for the liberation of the Holy Land. Twenty years later, Urban II realized that dream. Hosting the decisive Council of Piacenza and subsequent Council of Clermont in November 1095, resulting in the mobilization of Western Europe to go to the Holy Land. Byzantine Emperor Alec shows the first Komnos. Worried about the continued advances of the Seljuks, sent envoys to these councils asking Urban for aid against the invading Turks. Urban talked of the violence of Europe and the necessity of maintaining the peace of God, about helping Byzantium, about the crimes being committed against Christians in the East, and about a new kind of war, an armed pilgrimage, and of rewards in heaven where remission of sins was offered to any who might die in the undertaking. The enthusiastic crowd responded with cries of Deus lo volt, God wills it, immediately after Urban's proclamation. The French priest Peter the Hermit led thousands of mostly poor Christians out of Europe in what became known as the People's Crusade. In transit through Germany, these crusaders spawned German bands who massacred Jewish communities in what became known as the Rhineland Massacres. They were destroyed in 1096 when the main body of crusaders was annihilated at the Battle of Sivtot. In response to Urban's call, members of the high aristocracy from Europe took the cross. Foremost amongst these was the elder statesman Raymond IV of Toulouse, who with Bishop Adhema of Le Puy commanded southern French forces. Other armies included, one led by Godfrey of Bouillon and his brother Baldwin of Boulogne, forces led by Bohemond of Taranto and his nephew Tancred, and contingents under Robert Curtos, Stephen of Blois, Hugh of Vermandois, and Robert II of Flanders. The armies travelled to Byzantium where they were cautiously welcomed by the Emperor. Alexios persuaded many of the princes to pledge allegiance to him. He also convinced them their first objective should be Nicaea. Buoyed by their success at Sivtot, the overconfident Seljuks left the city unprotected, thus enabling its capture after the siege of Nicaea in May to June 1097. The first experience of Turkish tactics occurred when a force led by Bohemond and Robert was ambushed at Battle of Dorylium in July 1097. The Normans resisted for hours before the arrival of the main army caused a Turkish withdrawal. The Crusader army marched to the former Byzantine city of Antioch, which had been in Muslim control since 1084. The Crusaders began the siege of Antioch in October 1097 and fought for eight months to a stalemate. Finally, Bohemond persuaded a guard in the city to open a gate. The Crusaders entered, 
massacring the Muslim inhabitants as well as many Christians. A force to recapture the city was raised by Kerberga, the Seljuk at a beg of Mosul. The discovery of the Holy Lance by mystic Peter Bartholomew may have boosted the morale of the Crusaders. The Byzantines did not march to the assistance of the Crusaders. Instead, Alexius retreated from Philomelium. The Greeks were never truly forgiven for this perceived betrayal. The Crusaders attempted to negotiate surrender but were ejected. Bohemond recognized that the only remaining option was open combat and launched a counterattack. Despite superior numbers, the Muslims retreated and abandoned the siege. Raymond besieged Arca in mid-February 1099 and the Crusaders sent an embassy to the vizier of Egypt seeking a treaty. When Adhema died after Antioch, there was no spiritual leader of the crusade and the discovery of the Holy Lance provoked accusations of fraud among the clerical factions. On the 8th of April 1099, Arnulf of Jox, chaplain to Robert Curtos, challenged Bartholomew to an ordeal by fire. Peter underwent the ordeal and died after days of agony from his wounds, which discredited the Holy Lance as a fake. Raymond lifted the siege of Arca in May without capturing the town and the crusade proceeded south along the Mediterranean coast. Bohemond remained in Antioch, retaining the city, despite his pledge to return it to Byzantine control, while Raymond led the remaining army. Local rulers offered little resistance. They opted for peace in return for providing provisions. The Frankish emissaries rejoined the army accompanied by representatives from Egypt. This brought added information, the Egyptians had recaptured Jerusalem from the Seljuks. The Franks offered to partition conquered territory in return for rights to the city. When the offer was refused, it became advantageous if the crusade could reach Jerusalem before the Egyptians reinforced its defenses and raised a defensive army. On the 7th of June 1099, the Crusaders reached Jerusalem. Many Crusaders wept upon seeing the city they had journeyed so long to reach. An initial attack on the city failed, and the siege of Jerusalem of 1099 became a stalemate, until they breached the walls on the 15th of July 1099. If Tikarald Orla, the commander of the garrison, struck a deal with Raymond, surrendering the citadel in return for being granted safe passage to Escalon. For two days, the Crusaders massacred the inhabitants and pillaged the city. Jerusalem had been returned to Christian rule. Urban II died on the 29th of July 1099, 14 days after the fall of Jerusalem to the Crusaders, but before news of the event had reached Italy. He was succeeded by Pascal II. On July 22, 1099, a council was held in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and Godfrey of Bouillon took the leadership, not called king but rather with the title Advocatus Sancti Sepulchre. At this point, most Crusaders considered their pilgrimage complete and returned to Europe. Godfrey was left with a small force, a mere 300 knights and two. Oh, 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 foot soldiers, to defend the kingdom. In August 1099, the Franks defeated an Egyptian relief force at the Battle of Escalon. 
The First Crusade thus ended successfully and resulted in the creation of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. The Kingdom of Jerusalem 1099-1147 Godfrey of Bouillon died on 18 July 1100, likely from typhoid. The news of his death was met with mourning in Jerusalem. He was lying in state for five days before his burial at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The Jerusalem Knights offered the kingdom to Godfrey's brother Baldwin I of Jerusalem, then Count of Edessa. Godfrey's last battle, the Siege of Asyuf, would be completed by Baldwin in April 1101. Meanwhile, the Gobert of Pisa, now Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem, made the same offer to Bohemond, and asking that he prevent Baldwin's expected travel to Jerusalem. But the letter was intercepted and Bohemond was captured with Richard of Salerno by the Danishmens after the Battle of Melitene in August 1100. Baldwin I was crowned as the first king of Jerusalem on Christmas Day 1100 by Jagobert at the Church of the Nativity. Baldwin's cousin Baldwin of Bk, later his successor as Baldwin II, was named Count of Edessa, and Dankud became regent of Antioch during Bohemond's captivity, lasting through 1103. Crusade of 1101 The Crusade of 1101 was initiated by Pascal II when he learned of the precarious position of the remaining forces in the Holy Land. The host consisted of four separate armies, sometimes regarded as a second wave following the First Crusade. The first army was Lombardy, led by Anselm. Archbishop of Milan. They were joined by a force led by Conrad, constable to the German Emperor, Henry IV. A second army, the Nivernois, was commanded by William II of Nevers. The third group from northern France was led by Stephen of Blois and Stephen of Burgundy. They were joined by Raymond of Saint-Gilles, now in the service of the Emperor. The Fourth Army was led by William IX of Aquitaine and Welfe IV of Bavaria. The Crusaders faced their old enemy Kila Jarslan and his Seljuk forces first met the Lombard and French contingents in August 1101 at the Battle of Merce Ivan, with the Crusader camp captured. The Nivernois contingent was decimated that same month at Heracli, with nearly the entire force wiped out, except for the Count William and a few of his men. The Aquitanians and Bavarians reached Heracli in September where again the Crusaders were massacred. The Crusade of 1101 was a total disaster both militarily and politically showing the Muslims that the Crusaders were not invincible. Establishment of the Kingdom The reign of Baldwin I began in 1100 and oversaw the consolidation of the Kingdom in the face of enemies to the north, the Seljuks, and the Fatimids to the south. Al-Afdal Shehanshah, the powerful Fatimid vizier, anxious to recover the lands lost to the Franks, initiated the First Battle of Ramallah on 7 September 1101 in which his forces were narrowly defeated by those of Baldwin I. On 17 May 1102, the Crusaders were not so lucky, suffering a major defeat at the hands of the Fatimids, under the command of al Afdal's son Sharaf al-Mali at the Second Battle of Ramla. Among the slain were veterans of the Crusade of 1101, 
Stephen of Blois and Stephen of Burgundy. Comrade of Germany fought so valiantly that his attackers offered to spare his life if he surrendered. The kingdom was on the verge of collapse after the defeat. Recovering after the successful Battle of Jaffa on the 27th of May. In the north, the siege of Tripoli was begun, not to be resolved for seven years. Al-Afdal tried once more in the Third Battle of Ramla in August 1105 and was defeated. After the Crusader victory at the Siege of Beirut in 1110, the Fatimid threat to the kingdom subsided for two decades. The Battle of Haran was fought in 1104, pitting the Crusader states of Edessa and Antioch against Jikhermish, who had replaced Koboga as a Tabeg of Mosul, and Sokman, commander of the Seljuk forces. The ensuing Seljuk victory also resulted in the capture of Baldwin of Bk then Count of Edessa and later King of Jerusalem, and his cousin Jocelyn of Courtney. A Turkish adventurer Julie Sekawa killed Jikermish in 1106, seizing Mosul and his hostage Baldwin. Separately freed, Jocelyn began negotiations with Julie for Baldwin's release. Expelled from Mosul by Mordad, Jolie fled with his hostage to the fortress of Kalat Jabba. Jolie, in need of allies against Mordad, accepted Jocelyn's offer, releasing Baldwin in the summer of 1108. After Bohemond was ransomed in 1103, he had resumed control of Antioch and continued the conflict with the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantines had taken advantage of Bohemond's absence, retaking lands lost. Bohemond returned to Italy on late 1104 to recruit allies and gather supplies. Dankud again assumed leadership in Antioch, successfully defeating the Seljuks at the Battle of Atta in 1105, threatening Aleppo. In the meantime, his uncle began what is known as Bohemond's Crusade. Bohemond crossed into the Balkans and began the failed siege of Dyrrhachium. The subsequent Treaty of Devil of 1108 forced Bohemond to become vassal to the Emperor, restore taken lands and other onerous terms. Bohemond never returned. He died in 1111, leaving Tancred as regent to his son Bohemond II, who ignored the treaty. The Norwegian Crusade also known as the Crusade of Sigurd Jorsalfa, King of Norway, took place from 1107 to 1110. More of a pilgrimage than a crusade. It did include the participation in military action at the Siege of Sidon of 1110. Baldwin's army besieged the city by land, while the Norwegians came by sea, and the victorious crusaders gave similar terms of surrender as given to previous victories at Arsuf in 1102 and at the Siege of Acre of 1100-1104 freeing the major port of the kingdom. This crusade marked the first time a European king visited the Holy Land. Beginning in 1110, the Seljuks launched a series of attacks on the Crusade estates, in particular Edessa, led by Mordad. These included the Battle of Shazer in 1111, a stalemate. At the Battle of Al Sanabra of 1113, a Crusader army led by Baldwin I was defeated by a Muslim army led by Mordad and Togtukin, at a beg of Damascus, whose ultimate objective was Edessa. 
Mordad was unable to annihilate the Crusader forces and was soon murdered by assassins. Bersiuk ibn Bersiuk took command of the failed attempt against Edessa in 1114. Finally, Roger of Salerno routed the last Seljuk invading army at the First Battle of Tel Danith on 14 September 1115. Baldwin I died on 2 April 1118 after an attack on the city of Pelusium on the Nile. He was buried in Jerusalem. Baldwin II of Jerusalem became king on 14 April 1118. But was there was not a formal coronation until Christmas Day 1119 due to issues concerning his wife Morphia of Melitene. The early days of Baldwin II's reign included the Battle of Aegis Sanguinis, the Field of Blood, on the 28th of June 1119. At Aegis Sanguinis, an army led by Il Ghazi annihilated the Antiochian forces led by Roger of Salerno who was killed during the battle. The Muslim victory was short-lived, with Baldwin II and Pons of Tripoli narrowly defeating Il Ghazi's army at the Second Battle of Tel Danith on 14 August 1119. On 16 January 1120, Baldwin II and the new Patriarch Warmond of Jerusalem held the Council of Nablus, establishing a rudimentary set of rules for governing the kingdom now known as the Assizes of Jerusalem. The formal establishment of the Knights Templar was likely also granted by the Council, complementing the military arm of the Knights Hospitaller that was protecting pilgrims to the Holy Land. Both military orders were accumulating holdings in the kingdom and crusader states, with the hospitals eventually obtaining the famous Crack des Chevaliers, an important military and administrative center. The Venetian Crusade, also known as the Crusade of Calixtus II, was conducted from 1122 to 1124. The Western participants included those from the Republic of Venice as well as Bonds of Tripoli. The actions resulted in the successful siege of Tyre, taking the city from the Damascene at Herbeg Togdakin. This marked a major victor for Baldwin II prior to his second captivity in 1123. In 1123, Baldwin II led a raid to Saruj in order to rescue hostages held by Belek Ghazi and was also captured. Belek died in May 1124 and Baldwin II was seized by Il Ghazi's son, Timurdash, who commenced negotiations for Baldwin's release. After a portion of the ransom was paid, additional hostages to include Baldwin's youngest daughter Javetta, were provided secure payment of the balance. Baldwin II was released from the Citadel of Aleppo on 29 August 1124. Javetta was held by Il Bursuki and were ransomed by Baldwin II in 1125 using his spoils from the Battle of Azats of 1125. Togdequin died in February 1128, and Baldwin II began the Crusade of 1129, also known as the Damascus Crusade, shortly thereafter. The objective was Damascus, now led by the new Atabegtaj al Muluk Buri, the son of Togdequin. The Crusaders were able to capture the town of Banias, but were unable to take Damascus despite coming within six miles of the town. Baldwin II and Morphia married their eldest daughter Melisend of Jerusalem to Fulk V of Anjou in 1129 in anticipation of a royal succession. 
Baldwin II fell ill in Antioch and died on the 21st of August 1131. Fulk and Melisende were crowned joint rulers of Jerusalem on the 14th of September 1131 in the same church where Baldwin II had been laid to rest. Fulk assumed full control of the government, excluding Melisende, as he favoured fellow Angevins to the native nobility. The rise of Zenji at the same time the advent of Imad ad-Din Zenji saw the Crusaders threatened by a Muslim ruler who would introduce jihad to the conflict, joining the powerful Syrian Emirates in a combined effort against the Franks. He became at a beg of Mosul in September 1127 and used this to expand his control to Aleppo in June 1128. In 1135, Zenji moved against Antioch and, when the Crusaders failed to put an army into the field to oppose him, he captured several important Syrian towns. He defeated Fulk at the Battle of Burin of 1137, seizing Burin Castle. In 1137, Zenji invaded Tripoli, killing the Count Bonds of Tripoli. Fulk intervened, but Zenji's troops captured Pons' successor Raymond II of Tripoli, and besieged Fulk in the border castle of Montferrand. Fulk surrendered the castle and paid Zenji a ransom for his and Raymond's freedom. John II Comnos, Emperor since 1118, reasserted Byzantine claims to Cilicia and Antioch, compelling Raymond of Poitiers to give homage. In April 1138, the Byzantines and Franks jointly besieged Aleppo and, with no success, began the siege of Shaza, abandoning it a month later. On 13 November 1143, while the royal couple were in Acre, Fulk was killed in a hunting accident. On Christmas Day 1143, their son Baldwin III of Jerusalem was crowned co-ruler with his mother. That same year, having prepared his army for a renewed attack on Antioch, John II Comnos went hunting wild boar cutting himself with a poisoned arrow. He died on the 8th of April 1143 and was succeeded as emperor by his son Manuel I. Comnos. Following John's death, the Byzantine army withdrew, leaving Zenji unopposed. Fulk's death later in the year left Jocelyn II of Edessa with no powerful allies to help defend Edessa. Zenji came north to begin the first siege of Edessa, arriving on the 28th of November 1144. The city had been warned of his arrival and was prepared for a siege, but there was little they could do. Zenji realized there was no defending force and surrounded the city. The walls collapsed on the 24th of December 1144. Zenji's troops rushed into the city, killing all those who were unable to flee. All the Frankish prisoners were executed, but the native Christians were allowed to live. The Crusaders were dealt their first major defeat. Zenji was assassinated by a slave on the 14th of September 1146 and was succeeded in the Zenji dynasty by his son Eradin. The Franks recaptured the city during the second siege of Edessa of 1146 by stealth but could not take or even properly besiege the citadel. After a brief counter siege, Eradin took the city. The men were massacred, with the women and children enslaved, 
and the walls raised. Second Crusade The fall of Odessa caused great consternation in Jerusalem and Western Europe. Tampering the enthusiastic success of the First Crusade calls for a new crusade, the Second Crusade, were immediate, and was the first to be led by European kings. Concurrent campaigns as part of the Reconquest to and Northern Crusades are also sometimes associated with this crusade. The aftermath of the crusade saw the Muslim world united around Saladin, leading to the fall of Jerusalem. Eugene III, recently elected Pope, issued the bull Quantum Predecessors in December 1145 calling for a new crusade, one that would be more organized and centrally controlled than the first. The armies would be led by the strongest kings of Europe and a route that would be pre-planned. The Pope called on Bernard of Clairvaux to preach the Second Crusade, granting the same indulgences which had accorded to the First Crusaders. Among those answering the call were by two European kings, Louis VII of France and Conrad III of Germany. Louis, his wife, Eleanor of Aquitaine, and many princes and lords prostrated themselves at the feet of Bernard in order to take the cross. Conrad and his nephew Frederick Barbarossa also received the cross from the hand of Bernard. Conrad III and the German contingent planned to leave the Holy Land at Easter, but did not depart until May 1147. When the German army began to cross Byzantine territory, Emperor Manuel I had his troops posted to ensure against trouble. A brief battle of Constantinople in September ensued, and their defeat at the Emperor's hand convinced the Germans to move quickly to Asia Minor. Without waiting for the French contingent, Conrad III engaged the Seljuks of Rum under Sultan Mesadai, son and successor of Kilij Arslan, the nemesis of the First Crusade. Mesud and his forces almost totally destroyed Conrad's contingent of the Second Battle of Dorylium on 25 October 1147. The French contingent departed in June 1147. In the meantime, Roger II of Sicily, an enemy of Conrad's, had invaded Byzantine territory. Manuel I needed all his army to counter this force, and, unlike the armies of the First Crusade, the Germans and French entered Asia with no Byzantine assistance. The French met the remnants of Conrad's army in northern Turkey, and Conrad joined Louis's force. They fended off a Seljuk attack at the Battle of Ephesus on 24 December 1147. A few days later, they were again victorious at the Battle of the Meander. Louis was not as lucky at the Battle of Mount Cadmus on 6 January 1148 when the army of Mesud inflicted heavy losses on the Crusaders. Shortly thereafter, they sailed for Antioch, almost totally destroyed by battle and sickness. The Crusader army arrived at Antioch on 19 March 1148 with the intent on moving to retake Edessa, but Baldwin III of Jerusalem and the Knights Templar had other ideas. The Council of Acre was held on 24 June 1148 changing the objective of the Second Crusade to Damascus, a former ally of the kingdom that had shifted its allegiance to that of the Zengids. The Crusaders fought the Battle of Bosra with the Damascenes in the summer of 1147, with no clear winner. 
bad luck and poor tactics of the Crusaders led to the disastrous five-day siege of Damascus from 24 to the 28th of July 1148. The barons of Jerusalem withdrew support and the Crusaders retreated before the arrival of a relief army led by an heir ad -in. Morale fell. Hostility to the Byzantines grew and distrust developed between the newly arrived Crusaders and those that had made the region their home after the earlier Crusades. The French and German forces felt betrayed by the other lingering for a generation due to the defeat, to the ruin of the Christian kingdoms in the Holy Land. In the spring of 1147, Eugene III authorized the expansion of his mission into the Iberian Peninsula, equating these campaigns against the Moors with the rest of the Second Crusade. The successful siege of Lisbon, from 1 July to the 25th of October 1147, was followed by the six-month siege of Tortosa, ending on the 30th of December 1148 with a defeat for the Moors. In the north, some Germans were reluctant to fight in the Holy Land while the pagan Wends were a more immediate problem. The resulting Wendish Crusade of 1147 was partially successful but failed to convert the pagans to Christianity. The disastrous performance of this campaign in the Holy Land damaged the standing of the papacy, soured relations between the Christians of the Kingdom and the West for many years, and encouraged the Muslims of Syria to even greater efforts to defeat the Franks. The dismal failures of this crusade then set the stage for the fall of Jerusalem, leading to the Third Crusade. Nair ad-Din and the rise of Saladin In the first major encounter after the Second Crusade, Nair ad-Din's forces then destroyed the Crusader army at the Battle of Inab on the 29th of June 1149. Raymond of Poitiers as Prince of Antioch, came to the aid of the besieged city. Raymond was killed and his head was presented to Nair ad-Din, who forwarded it to the Caliph al-Muqtafi in Baghdad. In 1150, Nair ad-Din defeated Jocelyn II of Edessa for a final time, resulting in Jocelyn being publicly blinded dying in prison in Aleppo in 1159. Later that year, at the Battle of Aintab, he tried but failed to prevent Baldwin III's evacuation of the residents of Turbisal. The unconquered portions of the county of Edessa would nevertheless fall to the Zengids within a few years. In 1152, Raymond II of Tripoli became the first Frankish victim of the assassins. Later that year, Nair ad-Din captured and burned Tortosa, briefly occupying the town, before it was taken by the Knights Templar as a military headquarters. After the siege of Ascalon ended on the 22nd of August 1153 with a crusade of victory and Damascus was taken by Nair ad-Din the next year, uniting all of Syria under Zengid rule. In 1156, Baldwin III was forced into a treaty with Nair ad-Din, and later entered into an alliance with the Byzantine Empire. On the 18th of May 1157, Nair ad-Din began a siege on the Knights Hospitaller contingent at Bainias, with the Grand Master Bertrand of Blankfort captured. Baldwin III was able to break the siege, only to be ambushed at Jacob's Ford in June. Reinforcements from Antioch and Tripoli were able to relieve the besieged crusaders. Bertrand's captivity lasted until 1159, 
When Emperor Manuel I negotiated an alliance with Nair ad-Din against the Seljuks, Baldwin III died on the 10th of February 1163, and Amal Ruk of Jerusalem was crowned as King of Jerusalem eight days later. He undertook a series of four invasions of Egypt from 1163 to 1169 taking advantage of weaknesses of the Fatimids. Nair ad-Din's intervention in the first invasion allowed his general Shirku, accompanied by his nephew Saladin, to enter Egypt. Shawar, the deposed vizier to the Fatimid Caliph al added, allied with their mal Rukai attacking Shirku at the Second Siege of Bilbri beginning in August 1164, following Amalruk's unsuccessful first siege in September 1163. This action left the Holy Land lacking in defenses, and Nair ad-Din defeated a crusade of forces at the Battle of Haram in August 1164, capturing most of the Franks' leaders. After the sacking of Bilbo, the Crusader Egyptian force was to meet Shirku's army in the indecisive Battle of al Babn on the 18th of March 1167. In 1169, both Shawar and Shirku died, and Al-Adid appointed Saladin as vizier. Saladin, with reinforcements from Nair ad-Din, defeated a massive crusader Byzantine force at the Siege of Damietta in late October. This gained Saladin the attention of the assassins, with attempts on his life in January 1175 and again on the 22nd of May 1176. Baldwin IV of Jerusalem became king on the 5th of July 1174 at the age of 13. As a leper he was not expected to live long, and served with a number of regents, and served as co-ruler with his cousin Baldwin V of Jerusalem beginning in 1183. Baldwin IV. Reynald of Chaitalan and the Knights Templar defeated Saladin at the celebrated Battle of Montgizad on 25 November 1177. In June 1179, the Crusaders were defeated at the Battle of Marjab, and in August the unfinished castle at Jacob's Ford fell to Saladin, with the slaughter of half its Templar garrison. However, the kingdom repelled his attacks at the Battle of Belvoir Castle in 1182 and later in the Siege of Karak of 1183. The fall of Jerusalem, Baldwin V became sole king upon the death of his uncle in 1185 under the regency of Raymond III of Tripoli. Raymond negotiated a truce with Saladin which went dry when the king died in the summer of 1186. His mother Sibylla of Jerusalem and her husband Guy of Lusignan were crowned as Queen and King of Jerusalem in the summer of 1186, shortly thereafter. They immediately had to deal with the threat posed by Saladin. Despite his defeat at the Battle of Alphal in the fall of 1183, Saladin increased his attacks against the Franks, leading to their defeat at the Battle of Crescent on the 1st of May 1187. Guy of Lusignan responded by raising the largest army that Jerusalem had ever put into the field. Saladin lured this force into inhospitable terrain without water supplies and routed them at the Battle of Hattin on the 4th of July 1187. One of the major commanders was Raymond III of Tripoli who saw his force slaughtered, with some knights deserting to the enemy, and narrowly escaping.
only to be regarded as a traitor and coward. Gaev Lusignan was one of the few captives of Saladin's after the battle. Along with Reynald of Chaitalin and Humphrey IV of Turon. Reynald was beheaded. Settling an old score. Guy and Humphrey were imprisoned in Damascus and later released in 1188. As a result of his victory. Much of Palestine quickly fell to Saladin. The siege of Jerusalem began on the 20th of September 1187 and the holy city was surrendered to Saladin by Balian of Ibelin on the 2nd of October. According to some, on the 19th of October 1187, Urban III died upon of hearing of the defeat. Jerusalem was once again in Muslim hands. Many in the kingdom fled to Tyre and Saladin's subsequent attack at the Siege of Tyre beginning in November 1187 was unsuccessful. The later Siege of Saft in late 1188 completed Saladin's conquest of the Holy Land. Third Crusade, the years following the founding of the Kingdom of Jerusalem were met with multiple disasters. The Second Crusade did not achieve its goals, and left the Muslim East in a stronger position with the rise of Saladin. A united Egypt Syria led to the loss of Jerusalem itself, and Western Europe had no choice but to launch the Third Crusade, this time led by the kings of Europe. The news of the disastrous defeat at the Battle of Hattin and subsequent fall of Jerusalem gradually reached Western Europe. Urban III died shortly after hearing the news, and his successor Gregory VIII issued the Bull Audita Tremendi on 29 October 1187 describing the events in the East and urging all Christians to take up arms and go to the aid of those in the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Calling for a new crusade to the Holy Land, the Third Crusade, to be led by Frederick Barbarossa and Richard I of England. Frederick took the cross in March 1188. Frederick sent an ultimatum to Saladin, demanding the return of Palestine and challenging him to battle and in May 1189, Frederick's host departed for Byzantium. In March 1190, Frederick embarked to Asia Minor. The armies coming from Western Europe pushed on through Anatolia, defeating the Turks and reaching as far as Cilicia, Armenia. On the 10th of June 1190, Frederick drowned near Silifk Castle. His death caused several thousand German soldiers to leave the force and return home. The remaining German army moved under the command of the English and French forces that arrived shortly thereafter. Richard the Lionheart had already taken the cross as the Count of Poitou in 1187. His father Henry II of England and Philip II of France had done so on 21 January 1188 after receiving news of the fall of Jerusalem to Saladin. Richard I and Philip II of France agreed to go on the crusade in January 1188. Arriving in the Holy Land, Richard led his support to the stalemated Siege of Acre. The Muslim defenders surrendered on the 12th of July 1191. Richard remained in sole command of the Crusader force after the departure of Philip II on the 31st of July 1191. On the 20th of August 1191, Richard had more than 2000 prisoners beheaded at the massacre of Ayodhya. Saladin subsequently ordered the execution of his Christian prisoners in retaliation. Richard moved south, 
defeating Saladin's forces at the Battle of Asyuf on 7 September 1191. Three days later, Richard took Jaffa, held by Saladin since 1187, and advanced inland towards Jerusalem. On 12 December 1191 Saladin disbanded the greater part of his army. Learning this, Richard pushed his army forward, to within 12 miles from Jerusalem before retreating back to the coast. The Crusaders made another advance on Jerusalem, coming within sight of the city in June before being forced to retreat again. Hugh III of Burgundy, leader of the Franks, was adamant that a direct attack on Jerusalem should be made. This split the Crusader army into two factions, and neither was strong enough to achieve its objective. Without a united command the army had little choice but to retreat back to the coast. On the 27th of July 1192, Saladin's army began the Battle of Jaffa, capturing the city. Richard's forces stormed Jaffa from the sea and the Muslims were driven from the city. Attempts to retake Jaffa failed and Saladin was forced to retreat. On the 2nd of September 1192 Richard and Saladin entered into the Treaty of Jaffa providing that Jerusalem would remain under Muslim control, while allowing unarmed Christian pilgrims and traders to freely visit the city. This treaty ended the Third Crusade. Three years later, Henry Vi launched the Crusade of 1197. While his forces were en route to the Holy Land, Henry Vi died in Messina on the 28th of September 1197. The nobles that remained captured the Levant coast between Tyre and Tripoli before returning to Germany. The crusade ended on the 1st of July 1198 after capturing Sidon and Beirut. Fourth Crusade in 1198. The recently elected Pope Innocent III announced a new crusade, organized by three Frenchmen, Theopold of Champagne, Louis of Blois, and Baldwin of Flanders. After Theopold's premature death, the Italian Boniface of Montferrat replaced him as the new commander of the campaign. They contracted with the Republic of Venice for the transportation of 30 000 crusaders at a cost of 85 000 marks. However, many chose other embarkation ports and only around 15 000 arrived in Venice. The Doge of Venice Enrico Dandolo proposed that Venice would be compensated with the profits of future conquests beginning with the seizure of the Christian city of Zara. Pope Innocent III's role was ambivalent. He only condemned the attack when the siege started. He withdrew his legate to disassociate from the attack but seemed to have accepted it as inevitable. Historians question whether for him, the papal desire to salvage the crusade may have outweighed the moral consideration of shedding Christian blood. The crusade was joined by King Philip of Swabia, who intended to use the crusade to install his exiled brother-in-law, Alexios for Angelos, as emperor. This required the overthrow of Alexios III Angelos, the uncle of Alexios IV. Alexios IV offered the crusade 10 000 troops, 200 000 marks and the reunion of the Greek church with Rome if they toppled his uncle Emperor Alexios III. When the crusade entered Constantinople, 
Alexios III fled and was replaced by his nephew. The Greek resistance prompted Alexios IV to seek continued support from the crusade until he could fulfill his commitments. This ended with his murder in a violent anti-Latin revolt. The crusaders were without seaworthy ships, supplies or food. Their only escape route was through the city, taking by force what Alexios had promised and the new anti-Westerner Byzantine ruler, Alexios V. Dukas, denied them. The sack of Constantinople involved three days of pillaging churches and killing much of the Greek Orthodox Christian populace. This sack was not unusual considering the violent military standards of the time, but contemporaries such as Innocent III and Ali ibn al saw it as an atrocity against centuries of classical and Christian civilization. Fifth Crusade The Fifth Crusade was a campaign by Western Europeans to reacquire Jerusalem and the rest of the Holy Land by first conquering Egypt ruled by the Sultan al-Adil, brother of Saladin. In 1213, Innocent III called for another crusade at the Fourth Lateran Council, and in the papal bull Quirmea. Innocent died in 1216 and was succeeded by Honorius III who immediately called on Andrew II of Hungary and Frederick II of Germany to lead a crusade. Frederick had taken the cross in 1215, but hung back, with his crown still in contention, and Honorius delayed the expedition. Andrew II left for Acre in August 1217, joining John of Brienne, King of Jerusalem. The initial plan of a two-prong attack in Syria and in Egypt was abandoned and instead the objective became limited operations in Syria. After accomplishing little, the ailing Andrew returned returned to Hungary early in 1218. As it became clear that Frederick II was not coming to East, the remaining commanders began the planning to attack the Egyptian port of Damietta. The fortifications of Damietta were impressive, and included the Burj Al Silsila, the chain tower, with massive chains that could stretch across the Nile. The siege of Damietta began in June 1218 with a successful assault on the tower. The loss of the tower was a great shock to the Ayyubids, and the Sultan al adil died soon thereafter. He was succeeded as Sultan by his son Al-Kamil. Further offensive action by the Crusaders would have to wait until the arrival of additional forces, including Legged Pelagius with a contingent of Romans. A group from England arrived shortly thereafter. By February 1219, the Crusaders now had Damietta surrounded, and al Kamil opened negotiations with the Crusaders, asking for envoys to come to his camp. He offered to surrender the Kingdom of Jerusalem, lest the fortresses of al Karak and Crac de Montreal guarding the road to Egypt, in exchange for the evacuation of Egypt. John of Brienne and the other secular leaders were in favor of the offer, as the original objective of the crusade was the recovery of Jerusalem. But Pelagius and the leaders of the Templars and Hospitals refused. Later, Francis of Assisi arrived to negotiate unsuccessfully with the Sultan. In November 1219, the Crusaders entered Damietu and found it abandoned, al Kamil having moved his army south. In the captured city, Pelagius was unable to prod the Crusaders from their inactivity, and many returned home, their vow fulfilled.
Al-Kamil took advantage of this lull to reinforce his new camp at Manshura, renewing his peace offering to the Crusaders, which was again refused. Frederick too sent troops and word that he would soon follow, but they were under orders not to begin offensive operations until he had arrived. In July 1221, Pelagius began to advance to the south. John of Brienne argued against the move, but was powerless to stop it. Already deemed a traitor for opposing the plans and threatened with excommunication, John joined the force under the command of the legate. In the ensuing Battle of Manshur in late August, Al Kamil had the sluices along the right bank of the Nile opened, flooding the area and rendering battle impossible. Pelagius had no choice but to surrender. The Crusaders still had some leverage as Damietta was well garrisoned. They offered the Sultan a withdrawal from Damietta and an eight year truce in exchange for allowing the Crusader army to pass the release of all prisoners, and the return of the relic of the True Cross. Prior to the formal surrender of Damietta, the two sides would maintain hostages, among them John of Brienne and Hermann of Salza for the Franks side and son of al Kamil for Egypt. The masters of the military orders were dispatched to Damietta, where the forces were resistant to giving up with the news of the surrender, which happened on the 8th of September 1221. The Fifth Crusade was over, a dismal failure, unable to even gain the return of the Peace of the True Cross. Sixth Crusade The Sixth Crusade was a military expedition to recapture the city of Jerusalem. It began seven years after the failure of the Fifth Crusade and involved very little actual fighting. The diplomatic maneuvering of Frederick II resulted in the Kingdom of Jerusalem regaining some control over Jerusalem for much of the ensuing fifteen years. The Sixth Crusade is also known as the Crusade of Frederick II. Of all the European sovereigns, only Frederick II, the Holy Roman Emperor, was in a position to regain Jerusalem. Frederick was, like many of the 13th century rulers, a serial crucignators, having taken the cross multiple times since 1215. After much wrangling, an onerous agreement between the Emperor and Pope Honorius III was signed on the 25th of July 1225 at San Germano. Frederick promised to depart on the crusade by August 1227 and remain for two years. During this period, he was to maintain and support forces in Syria and deposit escrow funds at Rome in gold. These funds would be returned to the Emperor once he arrived at Acre. If he did not arrive, the money would be employed for the needs of the Holy Land. Frederick II would go on the crusade as King of Jerusalem. He married John of Brienne's daughter Isabella II by proxy in August 1225 and they were formally married on the 9th of November 1227. Frederick claimed the kingship of Jerusalem despite John having been given assurances that he would remain as king. Frederick took the crown in December 1225. Frederick's first royal decree was to grant new privileges on the Teutonic Knights, placing them on equal footing as the Templars and Hospiters. After the Fifth Crusade, the Ayyubid Sultan al Kamil became involved in civil war in Syria and, having unsuccessfully tried negotiations with the West beginning in 1219, 
again tried this approach, offering return of much of the Holy Land in exchange for military support. Becoming Pope in 1227, Gregory IX was determined to proceed with the Crusade. The first contingents of Crusaders then sailed in August 1227, joining with forces of the kingdom and fortifying the coastal towns. The Emperor was delayed while his ships were refitted. He sailed on the 8th of September 1227, but before they reached their first stop, Frederick was struck with the plague and disembarked to seek medical attention. Resolved to keep his oath, he sent his fleet on to Acre. He sent his emissaries to inform Gregory IX of the situation. But the Pope did not care about Frederick's illness, just that he had not lived up to his agreement. Frederick was excommunicated on the 29th of September 1227, branded a wanton violator of his sacred oath taken many times. Frederick made his last effort to be reconciled with Gregory. It had no effect and Frederick sailed from Brindisi in June 1228. After a stop at Cyprus, Frederick too arrived in Acre on the 7th of September 1228 and was received warmly by the military orders, despite his excommunication. Frederick's army was not large, mostly German, Sicilian and English. Of the troops he had sent in 1227 had mostly returned home. He could neither afford nor mount a lengthening campaign in the Holy Land given the ongoing War of the Keys with Rome. The Sixth Crusade would be one of negotiation. After resolving the internecine struggles in Syria, al kamils position was stronger than it was a year before when he made his original offer to Frederick. For unknown reasons, the two sides came to an agreement. The resultant Treaty of Jaffa was concluded on the 18th of February 1229, with al kamil surrendering Jerusalem, with the exception of some Muslim holy sites, and agreeing to a 10-year truce. Frederick entered Jerusalem on the 17th of March 1229 and received the formal surrender of the city by al kamils agent and the next day, crowned himself. On the 1st of May 1229, Frederick departed from Acre and arrived in Sicily a month before the Pope knew that he had left the Holy Land. Frederick obtained from the Pope relief from his excommunication on the 28th of August 1230 at the Treaty of Seprano. The results of the Sixth Crusade were not universally acclaimed. Two letters from the Christian side tell differing stories, with Frederick touting the great success of the endeavor and the Latin Patriarch painting a darker picture of the Emperor and his accomplishments. On the Muslim side, al kamil himself was pleased with the accord, but other regarded the treaty as a disastrous event. In the end, the Sixth Crusade successfully returned Jerusalem to Christian rule and had set a precedent in having achieved success on crusade without papal involvement. The Crusades of 1239 to 1241 The Crusades of 1239 to 1241, also known as the Barons' Crusade, were a series of crusades to the Holy Land that, in territorial terms, were the most successful since the First Crusade. The major expeditions were led separately by Theopold I of Navarre and Richard of Cornwall. These crusades are sometimes discussed along with that of Baldwin of Courtney to Constantinople. 
In 1229, Frederick II and the Ayyubid Sultan al Kamil had agreed to a ten year truce. Nevertheless, Gregory IX, who had condemned this truce from the beginning, issued the papal bull Rachel Sir Umvidens in 1234 calling for a new crusade once the truce expired. A number of English and French nobles took the cross, but the crusade's departure was delayed because Frederick, whose lands the crusaders had planned to cross, opposed any crusading activity before the expiration of this truce. Frederick was again excommunicated in 1239, causing most crusaders to avoid his territories on their way to the Holy Land. The French expedition was led by Theopold I of Navarre and Hugh of Burgundy, joined by Amory of Montfort and Peter of Drux. On the 1st of September 1239, Theopold arrived in Acre, and was soon drawn into the Ayyubid civil war, which had been raging since the death of al kamil in 1238. At the end of September, al kamils brother Azalah Ismail seized Damascus from his nephew, Azalah and recognized Al-Adil II as Sultan of Egypt. Theopold decided to fortify Ascalon to protect the southern border of the kingdom and to move against Damascus later. While the Crusaders were marching from Acre to Jaffa, Egyptian troops moved to secure border in what became the battle at Gaza. Contrary to Theopold's instructions and the advice of the military orders, a group decided to move against the enemy without further delay, but they were surprised by the Muslims who inflicted a devastating defeat on the Franks. The masters of the military orders then convinced Theopold to retreat to Acre rather than pursue the Egyptians and their Frankish prisoners. A month after the battle at Gaza, and Nazirdwad, Emir of Karak, seized Jerusalem, virtually unguarded. The internal strife among the Ayyubids allowed Theopold to negotiate the return of Jerusalem. In September 1240, Theopold departed for Europe, while Hugh of Burgundy remained to help fortify Ascalon. On the 8th of October 1240, the English expedition arrived, led by Richard of Cornwall. The force marched to Jaffa, where they completed the negotiations for a truce with Ayyubid leaders begun by Theopold just a few months prior. Richard consented. The new agreement was ratified by Ayyub by the 8th of February 1241 and prisoners from both sides were released on the 13th of April. Meanwhile, Richard's forces helped to work on Ascalon's fortifications, which were completed by mid-March 1241. Richard entrusted the new fortress to an imperial representative, and departed for England on the 3rd of May 1241. In July 1239, Baldwin of Courtney, the young heir to the Latin Empire, traveled to Constantinople with a small army. In the winter of 1239, Baldwin finally returned to Constantinople, where he was crowned emperor around Easter of 1240, after which he launched his crusade. Baldwin then besieged and captured Sir Ulam, a Nikin stronghold 75 miles west of Constantinople. Although the Baron's Crusade returned the kingdom to its largest size since 1187, the gains would be dramatically reversed a few years later. On the 15th of July 1244, 
The city was reduced to ruins during the siege of Jerusalem and its Christians massacred by the Khwarezmian army. A few months later, the Battle of Lafabi permanently crippled Christian military power in the Holy Land. The sack of the city and the massacre which accompanied it encouraged Louis IX of France to organize the Seventh Crusade. The Seventh Crusade The Seventh Crusade was the first of the two crusades led by Louis IX of France. Also known as the Crusade of Louis IX to the Holy Land, its objective was to reclaim the Holy Land by attacking Egypt, the main seat of Muslim power in the Middle East. Then under as Salih Hayab, son of al Kamil. The crusade was conducted in response to setbacks in the Kingdom of Jerusalem, beginning with the loss of the Holy City in 1244, and was preached by Innocent IV in conjunction with the crusade against Emperor Frederick II, the Prussian Crusades and Mongol incursions. At the end of 1244, Louis was stricken with a severe malarial infection and he vowed that if he recovered he would set out for a crusade. His life was spared, and as soon as his health permitted him, he took the cross and immediately began preparations. The next year, the Pope presided over First Council of Lyon, directing a new crusade under the command of Louis. With Rome under siege by Frederick, the Pope also issued his Ad Apostolici Dignitati St. Piusum, formally renewing the sentence of excommunication on the Emperor, and declared him deposed from the Imperial throne and that of Naples. The recruiting effort under Cardinal Odo of Chateru was difficult, and the crusade finally began on the 12th of August 1248 when Louis IX left Paris under the insignia of a pilgrim, the Oriflam. With him were Queen Margaret of Provence and two of Louis brothers, Charles I of Anjou and Robert I of Artois. Their youngest brother Alphonse, or Poitiers, departed the next year. They were followed by Hugh IV of Burgundy, Peter Molserk, Hugh XI of Lou Signan, Royal Companion and Chronicler Jean de Joinville, and an English detachment under William Longes P., grandson of Henry II of England. The first stop was Cyprus, arriving in September 1248 where they experienced a long wait for the forces to assemble. Many of the men were lost en route or to disease. The Franks were soon met by those from Acre including the masters of the orders Jean de Ronay and Guillaume de Sanac. The two eldest sons of John of Brienne, Orsonso of Brienne and Louis of Brienne, would also join as would John of Ibelin, nephew to the old Lord of Beirut. William of Vilhardwin also arrived with ships and Frankish soldiers from the Mora. It was agreed that Egypt was the objective and many remembered how the Sultans further had been willing to exchange Jerusalem itself for Damietta in the Fifth Crusade. Louis was not willing to negotiate with the infidel Muslims, but he did unsuccessfully seek a Franco-Mongol alliance, reflecting what the Pope had sought in 1245. As Salih Hayab conducting a campaign in Damascus when the Franks invaded as he had expected the Crusaders to land in Syria, hurrying his forces back to Cairo, he turned to his vizier Fakhrad din Ibn Az Sheikh to command the army that fortified Damietta in anticipation of the invasion. On the 5th of June 1249 the Crusader fleet began the landing and subsequent siege of Damietta. After a short battle, 
the Egyptian commander decided to evacuate the city. Remarkably, Damietta had been seized with only one crusader casualty. The city became a Frankish city and Louis waited until the Nile floods abated before advancing, remembering the lessons of the Fifth Crusade. The loss of Damietta was a shock to the Muslim world, and as Saleh Ayyub offered to trade Damietta for Jerusalem as his father had thirty years before, the offer was rejected. By the end of October 1249 the Nile had receded and reinforcements had arrived. It was time to advance, and the Frankish army set out towards Manshura. The Sultan died in November 1249, his widow Shajar al-Dar concealing the news of her husband's death. She forged a document which appointed his son al-Mu'atsam to Rancha, then in Syria, as Aaron Fakhrad in as viceroy. But the crusade continued, and by December 1249, Louis was encamped on the riverbanks opposite to Manshura. For six weeks, the armies of the West and Egypt faced each other on opposite sides of the canal, leading to the Battle of Manshura that would end on the 11th of February 1250 with an Egyptian defeat. Louis had his victory, but a cost of the loss of much of his force and their commanders. Among the survivors were the Templar Master Guillaume de Sanac, losing an eye, Humbert Vida Buge, Constable of France, John II of Soissons, and the Duke of Brittany, Petum Alsirk. Counted with the dead were the King's brother Robert I of Artois, William Longis P and most of his English followers, Peter of Courtney, and Raoul II of Cousy. But the victory would be short-lived. On the 11th of February 1250, the Egyptians attacked again. Templar Master Guillaume de Sanac and acting hospital Master Jean Drone were killed. Alphonse, or Poitier, guarding the camp was encircled and was rescued by the camp followers. At nightfall, the Muslims gave up the assault. On the 28th of February 1250, Tarantia arrived from Damascus and began an Egyptian offensive, intercepting the boats that brought food from Damietta. The Franks were quickly beset by famine and disease. The Battle of Farisca fought on the 6th of April 1250 would be the decisive defeat of Louis' army. Louis knew that the army must be extricated to Damietta and they departed on the morning of the 5th of April, with the king in the rear and the Egyptians in pursuit. The next day, the Muslims surrounded the army and attacked in full force. On the 6th of April, Louis' surrender was negotiated directly with the Sultan by Philip of Montfort. The king and his entourage were taken in chains to Manshura and the whole of the army was rounded up and led into captivity. The Egyptians were unprepared for the large number of prisoners taken, comprising most of Louis' force. The infirm were executed immediately and several hundred were decapitated daily. Louis and his commanders were moved to Manshura and negotiations for their release commenced. The terms agreed to were harsh. Louis was to ransom himself by the surrender of Damietta and his army by the payment of a million peasants. Latin Patriarch Robert of Nantes went under safe conduct to complete the arrangements for the ransom. Arriving in Cairo, he found Tarantia dead 
murdered in a coup instigated by his stepmother Shajar al -Dar. On the 6th of May, Geoffrey of Sergines handed Damietta over to the Muslim vanguard. Many wounded soldiers had been left behind at Damietta, and contrary to their promise, the Muslims massacred them all. In 1251, the Shepherds' Crusade, a popular crusade formed in 1251, with the objective to free Louis, engulfed France. After his release, Louis went to Acre where he remained until 1254. This is regarded as the end of the Seventh Crusade. The last Crusades after the defeat of the Crusaders in Egypt, Louis remained in Syria until 1254 to consolidate the Crusader states. A brutal power struggle developed in Egypt between various Mamluk leaders and the remaining weak Ayyubid rulers. The threat presented by an invasion by the Mongols led to one of the competing Mamluk leaders, Qutuz, seizing the Sultanate in 1259 and uniting with another faction led by Bayibas to defeat the Mongols at Ain Jalut. The Mamluks then quickly gained control of Damascus and Aleppo before Qudus was assassinated and Babers assumed control. Between 1265 and 1271, Bayibas drove the Franks to a few small coastal outposts. Bayibas had three key objectives, to prevent an alliance between the Latins and the Mongols to cause dissension among the Mongols, and to maintain access to a supply of slave recruits from the Russian steppes. He supported King Manfred of Sicily's failed resistance to the attack of Charles and the Papacy. Dissension in the Crusader states led to conflicts such as the War of St. Sibers. Venice drove the Genoese from Acre to Tyre where they continued to trade with Egypt. Indeed, Bayibas negotiated free passage for the Genoese with Michael VIII Palaiologos, Emperor of Nicaea, the newly restored ruler of Constantinople. In 1270 Charles turned his brother King Louis IX's crusade known as the Eighth Crusade, to his own advantage by persuading him to attack Tunis. The Crusader army was devastated by disease, and Louis himself died at Tunis on the 25th of August. The fleet returned to France. Prince Edward, the future King of England, and a small retinue arrived too late for the conflict but continued to the Holy Land in what is known as Lord Edward's Crusade. Edward survived an assassination attempt, negotiated a ten-year truce, and then returned to manage his affairs in England. This ended the last significant crusading effort in the Eastern Mediterranean decline and fall of the Crusader states. The causes of the decline in crusading and the failure of the Crusader states are multifaceted. Historians have attempted to explain this in terms of Muslim reunification and jihadi enthusiasm but Thomas Asbridge, amongst others, considers this too simplistic. Muslim unity was sporadic and the desire for jihad ephemeral. The nature of crusades was unsuited to the conquest and defense of the Holy Land. Crusaders were on a personal pilgrimage and usually returned when it was completed. Although the philosophy of crusading changed over time, the Crusades continued to be conducted by short-lived armies led by independently-minded potentates, rather than with centralized leadership. What the Crusader states needed were large standing armies. 
Religious fervor enabled significant feats of military endeavor but proved difficult to direct and control. Succession disputes and dynastic rivalries in Europe. Failed harvests and heretical outbreaks. All contributed to reducing Latin Europe's concerns for Jerusalem. Ultimately, even though the fighting was also at the edge of the Islamic world, the huge distances made the mounting of crusades and the maintenance of communications insurmountably difficult. It enabled the Islamic world, under the charismatic leadership of Zenji, Nair al-Din, Saladin, the ruthless Bayibuz and others, to use the logistical advantages of proximity to victorious effect. The mainland crusader states were finally extinguished with the fall of Tripoli in 1289 and Acre in 1291. It is reported that many Latin Christians either evacuated to Cyprus by boat or were killed or enslaved. Despite this, Ottoman census records of Byzantine churches show that most parishes in the former Crusader states survived at least until 16th century and remained Christian. The military expeditions undertaken by European Christians in the 11th, 12th, and 13th centuries to recover the Holy Land from Muslims provided a template for warfare in other areas that also interested the Latin Church. These included the 12th and 13th century conquest of Muslim Al-Andalus by Spanish Christian kingdoms, 12th to 15th century German Northern Crusades expansion into the pagan Baltic region, the suppression of nonconformity particularly in Languedoc during what has become called the Albigensian Crusade and for the papacy's temporal advantage in Italy and Germany that are now known as political crusades. In the 13th and 14th centuries there were also unsanctioned, but related popular uprisings to recover Jerusalem known variously as Shepherds or Children's Crusades. Urban II equated the Crusades for Jerusalem with the ongoing Catholic invasion of the Iberian Peninsula and Crusades were breached in 1114 and 1118. But it was Pope Calixtus II who proposed dual fronts in Spain and the Middle East in 1122. In the spring of 1147, Eugene authorized the expansion of his mission into the Iberian Peninsula, equating these campaigns against the Moors with the rest of the Second Crusade. The successful siege of Lisbon, from 1 July to 25 October 1147, was followed by the six-month siege of Tortosa, ending on 30 December 1148 with a defeat for the Moors. In the north, some Germans were reluctant to fight in the Holy Land while the pagan Wends were a more immediate problem. The resulting Wendish Crusade of 1147 was partially successful but failed to convert the pagans to Christianity. By the time of the Second Crusade the three Spanish kingdoms were powerful enough to conquer Islamic territory, Castile. Aragon, and Portugal. In 1212 the Spanish were victorious at the Battle of Las Navas de Tolosa with the support of foreign fighters responding to the preaching of Innocent III. Many of these deserted because of the Spanish tolerance of the defeated Muslims, for whom the Reconquista was a war of domination rather than extermination. In contrast the Christians formerly living under Muslim rule called Mozarabs had the Roman rite relentlessly imposed on them and were absorbed into mainstream Catholicism. Al-Andalus, Islamic Spain, was completely suppressed in 1492 when the Emirate of Granada surrendered. 
in 1147. Pope Eugene III extended Calixtus's idea by authorizing a crusade on the German northeastern frontier against the pagan Wends from what was primarily economic conflict. From the early 13th century, there was significant involvement of military orders, such as the Livonian Brothers of the Sword and the Order of Dorgtsin. The Teutonic Knights diverted efforts from the Holy Land, absorbed these orders and established the state of the Teutonic Order. This evolved the Duchy of Prussia and Duchy of Courland and Semigallia in 1525 and 1562, respectively. By the beginning of the 13th century papal reticence in applying crusades against the papacy's political opponents and those considered heretics. Innocent III proclaimed a crusade against Catharism that failed to suppress the heresy itself but ruined the culture of the Languedoc. This set a precedent that was followed in 1212 with pressure exerted on the city of Milan for tolerating Catharism. In 1234 against the Stiedinger peasants of northwestern Germany, in 1234 and 1241 Hungarian Crusades against Bosnian heretics. The historian Norman Housley notes the connection between heterodoxy and antipapalism in Italy. Indulgence was offered to anti-heretical groups such as the Militia of Jesus Christ and the Order of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Innocent III declared the first political crusade against Frederick II's regent, Margaret von Arnwalla, and when Frederick later threatened Rome in 1240, Gregory IX used crusading terminology to raise support against him. On Frederick II's death the focus moved to Sicily. In 1263, Pope Urban IV offered crusading indulgences to Charles of Anjou in return for Sicily's conquest. However, these wars had no clear objectives or limitations, making them unsuitable for crusading. The 1281 election of a French Pope, Martin IV, brought the power of the papacy behind Charles. Charles's preparations for a crusade against Constantinople were foiled by the Byzantine Emperor Michael VIII Palaiologos, who instigated an uprising called the Sicilian Vespers. Instead, Peter III of Aragon was proclaimed King of Sicily. Despite his excommunication and an unsuccessful Aragonese crusade, Political crusading continued against Venice over Ferrara, Louis IV, King of Germany when he marched to Rome for his imperial coronation, and the free companies of mercenaries. The Latin states established were a fragile patchwork of petty realms threatened by Byzantine successor states, the Despotate of Epirus, the Empire of Nicaea and the Empire of Trebizond. Thessaloniki fell to Epirus in 1224, and Constantinople to Nicaea in 1261. Achaea and Athens survived under the French after the Treaty of Viterbo. The Venetians endured a long-standing conflict with the Ottoman Empire until the final possessions were lost in the Seventh Ottoman-Venetian War in the 18th century. This period of Greek history is known as the Franca Croatia or Latin Croatia and designates a period when Western European Catholics ruled Orthodox Byzantine Greeks. The threat of the expanding Ottoman Empire prompted further campaigns. In 1389, the Ottomans defeated the Serbs at the Battle of Kosovo won control of the Balkans from the Danube to the Gulf of Corinth, 
In 1396 defeated French crusaders and King Sigismund of Hungary at the Nicopolis. In 1444 destroyed a crusading Polish and Hungarian force at Varna. Four years later again defeated the Hungarians at Kosovo and in 1453 captured Constantinople. The 16th century saw growing rapprochement. The Habsburgs, French, Spanish and Venetians and Ottomans all signed treaties. Francis I of France allied with all quarters, including from German Protestant princes and Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. Anti-Christian crusading declined in the 15th century. The exceptions were the six failed crusades against the religiously radical Hussites in Bohemia and attacks on the Waldensians in Savoy. Crusading became a financial exercise, precedence was given to the commercial and political objectives. The military threat presented by the Ottoman Turks diminished, making anti-Ottoman crusading obsolete in 1699 with the final Holy League. Origins The First Crusade was an unexpected event for contemporary chroniclers. But historical analysis demonstrates it had its roots in developments earlier in the 11th century. Clerics and laity increasingly recognized Jerusalem as worthy of penitential pilgrimage. The desire of Christians for a more effective church was evident in increased piety. Pilgrimage to the Holy Land expanded after safer routes through Hungary developed from 1000. There was an increasingly articulate piety within the knighthood and the developing devotional and penitential practices of the aristocracy created a fertile ground for crusading appeals. The papacy's decline in power and influence had left it as little more than a localized bishopric but its assertion grew under the influence of the Gregorian reform in the period from the 1050s until the 1080s. The doctrine of papal supremacy conflicted with the view of the Eastern Church that considered the Pope as only one of the five patriarchs of the Christian Church, alongside the patriarchates of Alexandria, Antioch, Constantinople and Jerusalem. In 1054 differences in custom, creed, and practice spurred Pope Leo IX to send a delegation to the Patriarch of Constantinople, which ended in mutual excommunication and an east-west schism. Military Orders The military orders were forms of a religious order first established early in the 12th century with a function of defending Christians as well as observing monastic vows. The Knights Hospitaller had a medical mission in Jerusalem since before the First Crusade, later becoming a formidable military force supporting the Crusades in the Holy Land and Mediterranean. The Knights Templar were founded in 1119 by a band of knights who dedicated themselves to protecting pilgrims en route to Jerusalem. The Teutonic Knights were formed in 1190 to protect pilgrims in both the Holy Land and Baltic region. The Hospiters and the Templars became supranational organizations as papal support led to rich donations of land and revenue across Europe. This, in turn, led to a steady flow of new recruits and the wealth to maintain multiple fortifications in the Crusader states. In time, they developed into autonomous powers in the region. After the fall of Acre the Hospitals relocated to Cyprus, then ruled Rhodes until the island was taken by the Ottomans in 1522. While there was talk of merging the Templars and Hospitals in by Clement V, but ultimately the Templars were charged with heresy and disbanded. 
The Teutonic Knights supported the later Prussian campaigns into the 15th century. Art and Architecture According to the historian Joshua Prohr an O major European poet, theologian, scholar or historian settled in the Crusader states. Some went on pilgrimage, and this is seen in new imagery and ideas in Western poetry. Although they did not migrate east themselves, their output often encouraged others to journey there on pilgrimage. Historians consider the Crusader military architecture of the Middle East to demonstrate a synthesis of the European, Byzantine and Muslim traditions and to be the most original and impressive artistic achievement of the Crusades. Castles were a tangible symbol of the dominance of a Latin Christian minority over a largely hostile majority population. They also acted as centers of administration. Modern historiography rejects the 19th century consensus that Westerners learned the basis of military architecture from the Near East as Europe had already experienced rapid development in defensive technology before the First Crusade. Direct contact with Arab fortifications originally constructed by the Byzantines did influence developments in the East, but the lack of documentary evidence means that it remains difficult to differentiate between the importance of this design culture and the constraints of situation. The latter led to the inclusion of oriental design features such as large water reservoirs and the exclusion of occidental features such as moats. Typically, Crusader church design was in the French Romanesque style. This can be seen in the 12th century rebuilding of the Holy Sepulchre. It retained some of the Byzantine details but new arches and chapels were built to northern French, Aquitanian, and Provencal patterns. There is little trace of any surviving indigenous influence in sculpture, although in the Holy Sepulchre the column capitals of the south facade follow classical Syrian patterns. In contrast to architecture and sculpture, it is in the area of visual culture that the assimilated nature of the society was demonstrated. Throughout the 12th and 13th centuries the influence of indigenous artists was demonstrated in the decoration of shrines, paintings and the production of illuminated manuscripts. Frankish practitioners borrowed methods from the Byzantines and indigenous artists and iconographical practice leading to a cultural synthesis, illustrated by the Church of the Nativity. Wall mosaics were unknown in the West but in widespread use in the Crusader states. Whether this was by indigenous craftsmen or learned by Frankish ones is unknown but a distinctive original artistic style evolved. Manuscripts were produced and illustrated in workshops housing Italian, French, English and local craftsmen leading to a cross-fertilization of ideas and techniques. An example of this is the Melisande Psalter, created by several hands in a workshop attached to the Holy Sepulchre. This style could have both reflected and influenced the taste of patrons of the arts. But what is seen is an increase in stylized, Byzantine-influenced content. This extended to the production of icons, unknown at the time to the Franks, sometimes in a Frankish style and even of Western saints. This is seen as the origin of Italian panel painting. While it is difficult to track illumination of manuscripts and castle design back to their origins, textual sources are simpler. 
The translations made in Antioch are notable. But they are considered of secondary importance to the works emanating from Muslim Spain and from the hybrid culture of Sicily. Female involvement until the requirement was abolished by Innocent III. Married men needed to obtain their wives' consent before taking the cross, which was not always readily forthcoming. Muslim and Byzantine observers viewed with disdain the many women who joined the armed pilgrimages, including female fighters. Western chroniclers indicated that female crusaders were wives, merchants, servants and sex workers. Attempts were made to control the women's behavior in ordinances of 1147 and 1190. Aristocratic women had a significant impact, Ida of Formbach Radlenberg led her own force in 1101, Eleanor of Aquitaine conducted her own political strategy and Margaret of Provence negotiated her husband Louis IX's ransom with an opposing woman, the Egyptian Sultana Shajar al dar Misogyny meant that there was male disapproval, chroniclers tell of immorality and Jerome of Prague blamed the failure of the Second Crusade on the presence of women. Even though they often promoted crusading, Preachers would typecast them as obstructing recruitment. Despite their donations, legacies and vow redemptions, the wives of crusaders shared their plenary indulgences. Finance of the Crusades Crusade finance and taxation left a legacy of social, financial, and legal institutions. Property became available while coinage and precious materials circulated more readily within Europe. Crusading expeditions created immense demands for food supplies, weapons, and shipping that benefited merchants and artisans. Levies for crusades contributed to the development of centralized financial administrations and the growth of papal and royal taxation. This aided development of representative bodies whose consent was required for many forms of taxation. The crusades strengthened exchanges between oriental and occidental economic spheres. The transport of pilgrims and crusaders notably benefited Italian maritime cities, such as the trio of Venice, Pisa, and Genoa. Having obtained commercial privileges in the fortified places of Syria, they became the favored intermediaries for trade in goods such as silk, spices, as well as other raw elementary goods and mineral products. Trade with the Muslim world was thus extended beyond existing limits. Merchants were further advantaged by technological improvements, and long-distance trade as a whole expanded. The increased volume of goods being traded through ports of the Latin Levant and the Muslim world made this the cornerstone of a wider Middle Eastern economy as manifested in important cities along the trade routes, such as Aleppo, Damascus and Acre. It became increasingly common for European merchants to venture further east, and business was conducted fairly despite religious differences, and continued even in times of political and military tensions. Legacy The Crusades created national mythologies, tales of heroism, and a few place names. Historical parallelism and the tradition of drawing inspiration from the Middle Ages have become keystones of political Islam encouraging ideas of a modern jihad and a centuries-long struggle against Christian states while secular Arab nationalism highlights the role of Western imperialism. Modern Muslim thinkers, 
politicians and historians have drawn parallels between the Crusades and political developments such as the establishment of Israel in 1948. Right-wing circles in the Western world have drawn opposing parallels. Considering Christianity to be under an Islamic religious and demographic threat that is analogous to the situation at the time of the Crusades. Crusader symbols and anti-Islamic rhetoric are presented as an appropriate response. These symbols and rhetoric are used to provide a religious justification and inspiration for a struggle against a religious enemy. The historiography of the Crusades is concerned with their history of the histories during the Crusader period. The subject is a complex one, with overviews provided in select bibliography of the Crusades. Modern historiography and Crusades. The histories describing the Crusades are broadly of three types, the primary sources of the Crusades, which include works written in the medieval period, generally by participants in the Crusade or written contemporaneously with the event, letters and documents in archives, and archaeological studies, secondary sources, beginning with early consolidated works in the 16th century and continuing to modern times, and tertiary sources, primarily encyclopedias, bibliographies and genealogies. Primary Sources The primary sources for the Crusades are generally presented in the individual articles on each Crusade and summarized in the list of sources for the Crusades. For the First Crusade, the original Latin chronicles, including the Gesta Francorum, works by Albert of Aachen and Fulcher of Chartres, the Alexiad by Byzantine Princess Anna Comnene, the complete work of history by Muslim historian Ali ibn al-Atha, and the chronicle of Armenian historian Matthew of Edessa, provide for a starting point for the study of the Crusades' historiography. Many of these and related texts are found in the collections Recueil des Histoires des Croisades and Crusade Texts in Translation. The work of William of Tyre, Historiarum in Partibus Transmarinis Gestarum, and its continuations by later historians complete the foundational work of the traditional crusade. Some of these works also provide insight into the later Crusades and Crusader states. Other works of note include, Eyewitness Accounts of the Second Crusade by Odo of Dillon and Otto of Frey Ising. The Arab view from Damascus is provided by Ibn al Kalanizai. Works on the Third Crusade such as Libuis de Expugnation Terre Sancti Basala Dynam Expedition, the Itinerarium Regis Ricardi, and the works of Crusaders Tagino and Roger of Howden, and the narratives of Richard of Devises, Ralph de Disito, Ralph of Cogch Island Arnold of Lubeck, the Arabic works by Alice Farhani and Al Makdizi, as well as the biography of Saladin by Bahaiddin ibn Shaddad, are also of interest. The Fourth Crusade is described in the Devastatio Constantinopolitana and works of Geoffrey of Vilhardouin. In his Chronicle de la Conquista de Constantinople, Robert de Clary and Gunter of Paris. The view of Byzantium is provided by Nicotas Choniates and the Arab perspective is given by Abu Sharma and Abul Fida. The history of the Fifth and Sixth Crusades is well represented in the works of Jacques de Vitry, Oliver of Paderborn and Roger of Wendover, and the Arabic works of Badr al-Din Alani. Key sources for the later Crusades include Gestes des Chiprois, 
Jean de Joinville's Life of St. Louis, as well as works by Guillaume de Nangis, Matthew Paris, Fidentius of Padua and Alan Grizzy. After the fall of Acre, the Crusades continued in through the 16th century. Principal references on this subject are the Wisconsin Collaborative History of the Crusades and Norman Housley's The Later Crusades, 1274-1580, from Leon to Alcazar. Complete bibliographies are also given in these works. Secondary Sources The secondary sources of the Crusades began in the 16th century. With the first use of the term Crusades was by 17th century French historian Louis Maimbg in his Histoire des Croisades pour la délivrance de la Terre Sainte. Notable works of the 18th century include Voltaire's Histoire des Croisades and Edward Gibbon's Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire, excerpted as the Crusades. A. D. 1095 to 1261 and published in 1870. This edition also includes an essay on chivalry by Sir Walter Scott, whose works helped popularize the Crusades. Early in the 19th century, the monumental Histoire des Croisades was published by the French historian Joseph Francois Mycord a major new narrative based on original sources. These histories have provided evolving views of the Crusades as discussed in detail in the historiography write-up in Crusading Movement. Modern works that serve as secondary source material are listed in the bibliography section below and need no further discussion here. Tertiary Sources Three works stand out as excellent references. These are, Louis Brihia's multiple works on the Crusades in the Catholic Encyclopedia, the works of Ernest Barker in the Encyclopedia Britannica, later expanded into a separate publication, and the Crusades, an encyclopedia, edited by historian Alan V. Murray.